All right. Good? Yeah, we're good. Um, right. So uh, it, we, we've, we'll have people funneling in as we uh, get yeah, going yeah. here. We'll have people funneling in. So if you want to shoot some shit to begin with while people get in here, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I'm... I, I thought the whole... I, I, when I was playing my first match, I didn't notice it, but then I went and back and played another one, and uh, it's just... It, it's so unpleasant, because the I think the lag amount actually can change between uh between fights, or in the middle of a fight, so that's a big problem, you know? Yeah, lag spikes, I mean, they can happen. It's really, uh... Well, it's shitty. There's no two ways for it. I mean, I just, I, I don't know what... I, I know talking about the new Smash Brothers, by the way. Yeah, correct? yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. talking about the new Smash. And, uh, I mean, I understand, you know, it, it, it's on the back burner for them and everything, but as one of those situations where it's like, oh, you need to be keeping up with the time, so to speak, as you're going forward, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't think that they can continue to act like this online thing is just a market they don't have to worry about. Yeah, well, was, did you play Mario Kart uh, 7, I think it was, for the DS? Yes, was... and I didn't have any problems with that. Yeah, and that was like eight players, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I don't understand what this problem is with... Uh, I don't know. Maybe now that it's in, you know, uh, all the other territories outside of Japan, maybe pe maybe people will start bitching and moaning enough that something will get done. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's very lag-free in Japan. A very small country. That's why I'm a little jealous. I mean, Monster Hunter and stuff like that, I mean, that's a thing. Over here, it's like, eh, not as great. I mean, it's a good game. It's just kind of hard to get connected, especially when there wasn't an online option. But they probably put a lot of that in the background. Like with uh, Mario Kart 7, you know, if there's racers behind you, you don't, like, fully render them or something like that. So there's probably a lot of shortcuts they can take in terms of streamlining right. the game. But anyway, welcome everybody to the show. This is Bird Gang's Soggy Knees, as he told me. <laughs> a, a nest of soggy knees. Uh, I, I have I have broken the legs off of the misogyny and, and, and taken it off of mahogany trees as well, just so I could you know use them to make my nest. So it's a very yeah. a very bloody, rotten smelling, you know, kind of nest. You're a nesting mother, is it? Those is. Yeah, are, we, I, I, are we the children that you feed? Uh, you are the eggs that I am sitting on to warm up in preparation for going out and consuming, you know, more of these knees. All right, well, if you ever want to barf in my mouth, you know, I'm ready for it. I, I, I will gladly do that. I will feed my baby birds. All right, that's good. And you are you are Bird Gang, correct? That's yes, I, like. I am Bird Gang. Uh, I am a... <laughs> There's barely anybody here. And I, I am a uh, writer for GoodGamers.us. Uh, I've been handling, doing a couple of uh, news articles uh, every so often. Uh, I also started a sort of re regular column, uh, State of Eorzea uh, over there, where I just uh, write on the current ongoings for the... MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV, and uh, I did a review for How to Full Boyfriend. So, right. yeah. How, how was How to Boyfriend? It, you are a bird, right? So you can Yes, get those well, I mean, I, up, I, there was a lot of people concerned uh, as to my bias that there was going to be for the game, but I, I managed to remain relatively unbiased. I, I put aside my... Uh, my... Bird status. My bird status and my poultry agenda. Uh, okay. Were you, and, were you in heat when you reviewed the game or no? I, I actually wasn't in heat. I took a suppressant to make sure okay. that wasn't going on. Uh, and, and I, you know, compared to like all the other stupid visual novels and decision-making games uh, out there, so I'm just, I, I was pretty happy with uh, the variety of stuff it was doing and paying homage and parodying the genre it came from. Okay, that's good. We also have another writer with us from the same site. Um, yes, we do. You want to introduce yourself, Matt? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I also uh, also write for Good Gamers. I I'm still working on the on the column that will hopefully hopefully be running weekly called Theory Crafting. I've also been doing a news item here and there. Um, and Jesus, I don't know how how do you how do you go about these things? That's that's basically. 
Well, I guess you might what want to care about what I have to say. Oh, you, you like editorials? Do you reviews? Don't you do translations or something? Or am I going no, crazy? No, no, no. That's the, oh no. That's um, that's Stephen. He's that those they they bring in the hits. Let me tell you. Um, he's he's doing these really niche translations of uh, of esports things. He he's not really an esports guy, but it no. But that's not me. I can't take credit for that. Um, no, you like I've uh, recently wrote about the Oculus Rift, uh, John Carmack's uh, uh, the the hit technology. Uh, no, that he gave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that nobody but I I guess five percent of his audience understood. Um, <laughs> Which <laughs> he is yeah. Carmack. Well, yeah, um, I'm I'm in the fortunate position of of actually understanding him because uh, I've I've programmed and programmed graphics and stuff like that. So I, I get what he's talking about. Um, and but it's it's still trying to relay what he talks about. It, it's it's a bundle. Yeah, it can um, be difficult. Yeah, like there was some interest on the site for um for getting some. A translation of what he was talking about during that keynote, um, which which hopefully we'll be able to uh, to put up for people. Um, but yeah, so okay. so technical stuff mm -hmm. and uh, theory crafting. That's me. Oh, cool. All right, we also have an actual developer here with us, um, Jennifer. Hi. Uh, happy UFO Studios or Happy? I know there's it's, Happy and UFO somewhere. Yeah, so. it's Happy UFO Studios. Um, okay. Yeah, I. I mostly work with other developers lately, but yeah, I worked on Alusha for about 11 years, and um, and I'm working on some new stuff, so hopefully that will be coming out late this year, early next year. Um, it's weird, because I haven't had like a new game out in a while, so people are like, oh, what, what's your game you're yeah, where's the game? working on right now? I'm like, 10 I can't talk about. <laughs> well, I know, it's, a, it's kind of an interesting situation, because I think here in the States, we've been so used to this uh, yearly releases with games, even games like Uncharted, yeah. where it's a you know adventure experience. I mean, pretty sure those games saw yearly releases. Um, what games have you put out or had a hand in helping create? And what do you do exactly? You're a graphic designer, I believe. Uh, I do a lot of different things. A lot of um, the animation business side, as well as some pro some minor programming. I'm becoming more of a programmer over the years and. A little bit less of an artist, but still my main stuff is art. Um, I'm working with Dapper Swine Studios right now on, on a game. I can't say too much about it, but that's that's kind of where a bulk of my work is going right now. You can check. Um, he's Dapper Swine on Twitter, and you can find a lot of the official updates there for uh, when we announce the one that we're currently working on. We don't want to say too much, because I don't like making promises I can't keep until they're already kept kind of thing. So, That's a smart move, because then people yeah. are like, hey, you said there'd be six-player multiplayer. Like, right, oh. well, and the early access stuff really has us scared, because, um, you know, there's been so much, you know, people just being like, oh, yeah, it's going to have all this stuff give us early access, and then, you know, they just are like, oh, well, we've made all the money we can make, bye. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, and we just really common. don't want to get into that. So, okay. so you're not you're not an early access game? Or no, no, okay. we don't and want to do that. Either, right? <laughs> I know those two are, like, in the same kind of pool. But okay, thanks for coming on, by the way, to everyone here. Uh, I'm Shiltfish, I'm with Spellsfire.com. It's a new community site that's coming up, but I'm not going to shill too hard. I'll show harder at the end. But anyway, we're all here. We're all pro Gamergate, right? I mean, have you guys heard about this Gamergate nonsense? I, I don't know. It sounds like it might be kind of a new thing. I, I don't I don't think it's going to have a lot of steam. I think they should really just call it hashtag GameOvergate already. I mean, come on. That's true. It, it, isn't that a Swedish uh, furniture store, Gamersgate or something? I don't know. Or maybe something <laughs> about ants. Be. That could be Jennifer's next game. Did we break it? Yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Did I break an embargo? Oh, yeah, you weren't supposed to talk about that, man. Yeah. Come on. Oh, no. no, no. I've we're, actually we're... had somebody do that before, which is funny. <laughs> oh, somebody, All right. somebody basically doxed my game to, to somebody, and I was like, oh, my God, you did not Jesus do Christ. that. Was it a streamer? Nobody heard it, so. Was it like a streamer, kind of like this? Yeah, it was, it was a stream. So I was okay. like, oh, I didn't, dear. I didn't joke about it then. Oh, it's okay. It yeah. it wasn't a big deal. It just nobody nobody saw or heard it, so it was just like whatever. Good. Well, it'll <laughs> stay that way. 
Uh, but no, Gamergate, it's still going strong after all this time, which kind of amazes me. Use, uh, usually things on the internet, they kind of just fizzle out very quickly. You um, know, I mean... if it's a big industry scandal. The funny thing is, is that by all, by, by all chances and all the other ongoings, uh, the, the steam that we've put behind it, I, in, in any other situation, it should have lost steam by now. But uh, I, I made a comment a couple of weeks ago to Jennifer, like, uh, about how this whole thing wouldn't have started if, uh, if, if you know, if the quote-unquote opposition or the people being targeted had just, you know, stuck to their guns and kept their, kept their heads buried in the sand and just completely and utterly ignored us. So you think the problem was publishing those hit piece articles? I, I think it was declaring gamers were dead. the fact that they. I, I think their mistake was thinking that they could engage with us and that they could, for lack of you know, put it, putting it in layman's terms, thinking they could win. Yeah, they tried to strong arm us out of the uh, you know movement with those. And this games. has backfired over and over and over again, and they still <laughs> don't seem to get that. Yeah, they've taken it to the next level, I think, with Intel. Now mm -hmm. Intel's pulling out, so now they're trying to strong arm them out by calling mm -hmm. them sexist and stuff. Did you have something you wanted to throw in, Mads? Yeah, I did. Um, Go ahead. I mean, yeah, well, whenever you know a, a cultural elite is established, uh, there's always going to be people who disagree with that, um, and that's that's what you have here, right? You have uh, people who were incredibly entrenched and who were used to doing things like doing business as usual, which would always come down to these, uh, whenever there, was, there would be trouble or issues, you, they do damage control, yeah. Um, th thing is, that only works for so long, at some point there's gonna be, there's gonna be too much momentum behind something and you're not gonna be able to stop it. Um, that's what we see, like it's, it's not really, it's not really unique to gaming that, you know, there has been an elite that has, Taken, taken something for granted, and there has been a momentum against them. It's pretty common in, if you look at history. All right. And Jennifer, I know you're a developer, so that must carry a whole different meaning with you, because, I mean, these are the sites that are representing yeah. your product to the consumer. So. Well, that's just it, right? Is like, I, I, I didn't say too much about it, because I didn't, I didn't know... At first, I was like, "Uh oh, you know, this is this is gonna blow <laughs> yeah, up." Boy. And then, and then I saw those articles, and I was like, "Oh, great!" And how they're attacking what I do for a living, and and the people who support me. I'm like, "This is great!" And I I couldn't believe it. Like my jaw was just open the whole time. I couldn't believe what I was reading. And, you know, talking about game conventions like they're your own personal fashion show, and you're there to criticize people. It's like if you come into a, a gaming convention and you're complaining about people wearing Mario gear, like just leave. You don't have to say yeah. anything. Just leave. Some of the stuff that was said was just completely unbelievable. And just people like, are just calling like, socially awkward. They're like, oh, you don't, you don't, you guys just didn't understand the article. If that many people didn't understand the article, you wrote it badly. And she reinforced it with tweets that were just like, yeah, I meant it. I hate you all. And I'm like, wow. You want to go into specifics to who you're referring to uh, as if it needs to be explained? Uh, you know, if you don't want to say... Yeah, if you I don't can, want to say I can say fine. something offhanded. You know, the, the, me personally. The megaphone. Uh, oh, yeah. megaphone coon. Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah. the megaphone. <laughs> Right. Well, as, as as a game developer, you must have uh, you must have read uh, Gamma Sutra, right? Like that must have been important. Um. No, I will be honest. Uh, Gamma Sutra. Uh, there have been some good articles on there, but for the last couple of years, um, the developers that I work with and I talk to have the, we kind of read those as 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 what not to do stories because there's a lot of uh, naivety and blaming the audience that I've seen there for a while that I really didn't like and that was just the final straw for me. There's a lot of people there who will give really bad information. They'll be like, oh, mobile is terrible because I released one game that was way over budget and I didn't think and I didn't do any research and this is clearly the fault of the market so I'm going to PC farewell. You know, there's just a lot of you know, hate of mobile gaming and, you know, hate of hate of this genre or that genre and just kind of dumping on on different groups. So I, I've always had a little bit of a 
a, a hesitance to believe anything that's written on there, and I've always kind of said, like, you know, uh, is, it's great to get another dev's perspective, but keep in mind that, that that there's a lot of things that are sort of colored by their own failure, and they don't want to admit to that. So I just, it, it's a- not it's not Gamma Sutra. Um, that I was worried about losing, it was just the fact that it was the final straw. So this is a sentiment that you think has been bubbling up for Gama Suture for quite a while now, right? Absolutely. Okay. And is this uh, something shared? Is this a shared belief amongst your office or staff or other game developers that you know? Or other game is developers. Is it a very mixed bag? Um, other game developers, uh, it's kind of... Uh, we do share like the articles together, but you'll you'll notice immediately the response to it will be, uh, they got this completely wrong. This is not correct. They didn't do any research. It's just, and I understand some of them are dev blogs and they're just getting their feelings out. But there was that sentiment of, you know, and we've even had developers come out saying like their audience is worthless and stuff like that, and that should have blown up bigger than it did. To be quite yeah. honest, that was not. That's not appropriate, and most devs will decry that till you know the cows come home because it's just that's not how you talk to people. And and yeah, I do think the sentiment that people have been testing the waters, and it's just been getting worse and worse. Seeing how much they can insult their audience and get away with it. <laughs> that's a very that's a very dangerous thing to push. Yeah, uh, the gamer gay is the evidence now. Okay, now I have another question and. I, I mean absolutely no offense to when I say this, but, you know, uh, Gama Sutra, it, you know, it's a major... The developers that are saying it's important, they're a little bit bigger than your studio. I mean, they're not necessarily independent. Do you think that maybe it isn't as important to you because of that, or what? I've always existed outside of that stuff. Like, my, my business was built outside of any of these social cliques and things like that. So that's possible. I mean, uh, but the problem is, is a lot of the game developers saying that they support it, the bigger ones, I don't see them writing on there. And when I do, I don't see them necessarily writing the things that I'm talking about. It is kind of like a potpourri of, of good and bad, I guess. I just didn't like that the bad was going completely unfettered, so to speak. They just, they didn't, they, there was nobody contesting it. The comments were all like, Oh, you know, clap, 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 you did a great job, don't worry about it, you know, that kind of thing, the sort of back padding. I think I may be able to chime in with some reasoning behind that. And uh, this is coming from somebody who's occasionally checked in every couple of months on Gama Sutra over the past couple of years. You know, I'll go there if I see an article that looks interesting. And uh, I I think we saw a rise in that in the same way we can attribute to what was going on over at Kotaku, because for the most part, I would say about three or four years ago, the argument could be made that uh, things going on over at Kotaku weren't the same state that they were right now. Uh, yeah, I am just going to fly out name drop, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I, I'm just, I, I'm not too worried about it, so I don't want you, anybody else to worry about that. But um, we saw this rise in the articles that were going to get people over there. I mean, prior to, I, I would gamble, uh, about a year or two ago, Gama Sutra was probably overloaded with a bunch of really kind of dry and overly economical and kind of nuts and bolts focus of their articles, because that's what I would often see anytime I went over to Gama Sutra when I was linked from someplace like either Joystick or Destructoid or Escapist or even a even when I saw it mentioned on uh, television shows back when kind of G4 Tech TV was still in its, you know, heyday, so to speak. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, um, I mean, the thing you would see is that if they were getting attention, it was because they were writing a gaming community, gamer-centric article. None of that, you know, none of the stuff with which I bet they were originally built and founded upon is probably the stuff what's, I preferred. <laughs> yeah, the the stuff that people like uh, Jenny or Jen, I whichever you would prefer to me to call. Either's fine. Um, the stuff that was preferred wasn't getting them the clicks. So unfortunately, I think it's like Kotaku. They resorted to whatever was going to get them the clicks. So they wrote heavily loaded opinion pieces and stuff that would get the gamers coming to the website, and they. Much like a lot of these other websites, they clung to that old moniker and that old statement of what they stood for. 
yeah, without I mean, recognizing that it actually changed. I prefer, yeah, I do prefer the economic stuff. That's what, that's kind of what I mean about it changing. It's not, I didn't mean to say that, like, it's not useful for devs. I just mean as it went on, it got less and less useful. We kind of had a running joke for a while where we were like, I wonder if someone's going to come out for or against Steam this week because every other week it was Steam's great and then the next week it was Steam's crap, Steam's garbage, Steam hates developers and then the next week it was Next week it was like Steam's great again, and I'm like, oh my god, you know. And it, it was different developers doing it, but it was just getting out of control. Just this sort of back and forth, and it had nothing to do with like the, they weren't really getting down to the heart of the matter. And yeah, the economics and nuts and bolts of it, they were just they were bickering over my game did bad, therefore Steam's bad. My game did good, therefore Steam's good. There was no like. It just sounds like on that. it sounds like your problem isn't so much that you didn't like the content so much as well you you didn't like the content but it was more that your problem was why is this content being pushed as hard as it is to the front page when there's other stuff that is supposed to be what this website stands for right well what was ended up starting to get shared around was not the articles that interested me because they were full of data, but the articles that were blogs that were written by people who were upset about something, or you know, it's just they were they were they were brag and dump blogs, like they were either bragging or dumping on things, and it was just like I I don't when I'm I don't have time to read how somebody felt about their audience when it's like an extremely negative <laughs> that and sometimes it wasn't the audience was completely removed from the equation it was just like steam's bad it's steam's fault my game didn't sell and i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> well uh, if if i may ask a follow up question to all of these things um how long has it been since you feel like you learned something visiting gamma sutra like as a developer Probably about two to three years, I would say. For for a website that's just made clear that's kind of supposed to be a place where developers go to learn things. That's a lot longer than I thought you were going to say, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> I started actually picking up um, a magazine called Game Sauce and another one called Casual Connect, and even though they're mostly mobile... I was learning more from them, and not just about, like, you know, development and postmortems. I was learning more about how the, the social atmosphere of game development is in other circles. Like, for example, if you look at indie dev, you would probably think that, you know, everyone hates female developers, and they don't get much press, and, you know, all of that stuff. But if you go to, like, mobile and, like, game sauce, they talk about, they don't talk about it like it's a big deal. They're just like, look at this successful person. Look at this person. Look at that. Like, it's profiles of what people have done and their advice to people rather than profiles of what bad stuff has happened to who this week and who got called, you know, a butt face. You know, like, it's, it's le I, I think it's more mature in the discussions and that's sort of what, I think that people need to move towards and get away from this, like, who was harassed this week? Who got sent, like, and it's not that people shouldn't talk about it. It's just that that's all they talk about, and I'm not learning anything. The the definite point that needs to be reinforced is that by no means is anybody, I think, within Gamergate suggesting that the things that are said shouldn't be said. I don't think anybody is saying that and nobody is allowed to have the opinion of the Gamers Are Dead uh, article. Right. There was a really great tweet I saw earlier today that uh, said something along the lines of, it's fine to uh, criticize and uh, denounce other people, but being that this is you know, a capitalist country and that's where most of this shit is kind of centered around at the moment. I mean, let's be honest, that uh, most of this stuff really doesn't involve anything outside of the states in terms of gaming, except maybe European developers and that kind of stuff. It's kind of bleeding over into there, but it's mostly sticking within the U.S. and Canada, because that's where most of these developers and journalists are centered around, if I'm correct. Um, as a result, we're kind of seeing... Or, sorry. We're seeing these opinions being dumped onto the front page, and the problem is, is that they aren't following up with that whole issue of they need to answer for when they are criticizing and calling people out on things. 
The problem is, is that a lot of the pushback we're seeing is that they think either A, they don't have to answer to it, or B, when they are answering to it, they're answering with hostility, ad hominem, cherry picking. You know, there's a lot of, there are appropriate ways to handle our criticism towards the opposition, and I don't think I've seen any healthy response to it so far. Definitely. Did you have something you wanted to add, Matt? Oh, um, uh, yeah, that was, that was uh, I guess, uh, regarding more <laughs> what we were um, discussing specifically about Gamma Sutra. Um, it seemed like, the, um, from what you described, Jen, that it's like there was a, a change of focus on the website from being driven by what makes a great game, like a, a trade, like focusing on focusing on the trade of computer games and moving into focusing on persons, like celebrity, fo focusing right. on, yeah, on, on, on the idea of, of identity, like who's who, what's what, who's, who's famous, who's powerful, who's a megaphone, who can you mess with on Twitter and not get your career demolished. Is that, is that accurate? I would say so, and it's not just the, the website itself, it's who's sharing it and what reasons they're sharing it for. Like, the articles that would come down the pipeline, so to speak, they people would be just it's it's just gossip stuff. It's not it, it they weren't like, Oh, I'm interested in game development, look at this great breakdown of, you know, metrics or things like that. It's like, ha, ah, you know, look at this dev. He's being ridiculous. And even I fell into that and I was just like, This blog is ridiculous. Like who you know, who wrote this and why would you write it? And I just I kept getting more and more of that stuff and I was just like, I can't I can't stand reading it anymore. <laughs> you can't take it seriously. Just yeah. too much. And the whole idea behind it was that it wasn't just necessarily one article. It was all these articles being released at the same time that really right. made evidence that this is a fucking attack against gamers. And that's just the most ridiculous movement you could try to push. Like, why would you attack your consumers? It just makes no sense. I mean, these are the people that are supporting you. But at the same time, they are they were so used to getting away and getting traffic after pushing all these other crappy articles that had to do with pushing an agenda or accusing games of being sexist or whatever the hell, that they thought they could get away with it. Or if I think worse, they, they actually, probably thought that if they had enough voices, it would be even better. I think they on. actually thought they could, they could get away with it, and many people might disagree with me. Up until Intel pulled their ads, they still thought they were getting away with it, to be quite honest. That's why they freaked out so much when that yeah, happened. Yeah, I was going to actually chime in with that. Uh, I, I think it's great that we've been having certain advertisers pull out, but I think that was over, what, two and a half, three weeks ago that we had that news that um, uh, that somebody had pulled uh, stuff from Polygon, I think, was it? I know Rock, Paper, Shotgun had a lot of stuff pulled. Yeah, we, we had heard about them having stuff pulled, but we didn't have any major things. We had we had some other stuff that were like, oh, well, we don't want our money being wasted because those companies seriously cannot waste their money. It, it, it's just, it's not in their best interest. So to have somebody as big as Intel, to have somebody whose business is heavily invested in the actual scene that these things are covering, you know, that's why everybody kind of freaked the fuck out when, uh, when, when Intel said, we're pulling our support. And, you know, they... they uh, the reaction from the opposition about that pullout was not what I expected in any way whatsoever because it says to me that there might still actually be people who think on the other side, or who are against Gamergate, let's not make it a specific side, that they still think that they're not going to have to answer for what they've done. And, you know, I, I don't think... I don't think they're going to change on that anytime soon. They've dug their heels in so far that if they pull out now, they're just going to topple over and fall on their backs. Mm -hmm. There is no... Honestly, I don't even think there is a pulling out, so I can't even blame them. At before, it just seemed like the natural thing to do would just to be to fucking apologize. I mean, you're trying to establish yourself as a professional website. You're publishing a very insulting article from your editor-in-chief that is flat-out attacking your consumers, you know, just come forward and be like, you know, okay, we wrote this article, our head wasn't, you know, in our normal place, uh, we apologize, we pulled down the article, or we made edits, 
And, uh, you know, we're not going to let this happen again in the future. You know, if I can know they didn't do that and they just let it go for so long, and now it's like even if they did apologize, yeah, we, there's such a blood crusade going on at this point that I honestly do not think it matters. There's there's someone in the comments who said, uh, Sarah Nedger, every major company is now having the same discussion Intel had. And I think that may be why we're seeing that we saw that spike in hostility a couple of days ago. They they might actually be legitimately scared and concerned now that their status quo is being challenged because if one big company is coming out, that's sending a flag to other companies. Oh, shit, we may actually have to do something now because one of us or one of the people who is like us finally said something. Yeah, I don't think there is a may do this. Intel is one of the most successful fucking companies out there in terms of PC and production. it's run by a woman right now. Yeah, it's run so. by a woman. So any allegation that it's sexist is completely retarded. I'm sorry if you don't like that word, but it's completely fitting <laughs> here. And other companies, if other companies are trying to emulate Intel's business strategies because Intel is successful, they're going to be looking at this and thinking, man, maybe advertising on these gaming journal websites isn't the place to go. Well, let's not uh, let's not forget that there was actually a website that did uh, did air an apology of sorts. Uh, the uh, Ars Technica, if they have a name that was never meant to be said, I believe. Um, they uh, they had uh, Kyle Orland, uh, the I, I think he's been called the headmaster of the the Games Journal Pro list. Um, they had him come out uh, with an apology. Apparently, his uh, his feathers were ruffled. By uh, by the editor in chief, um, and uh, and apparently he was uh, he was made to to apologize. So he, he he put out a piece called an apology and apologia for the for the game journal pros uh, list. But that's it. That's all we've gotten. And I, I don't know. You're not gonna you're not gonna see like these fourteen websites each come together and start apologizing. And I don't think I'm not even sure you ever, ever were. Like I don't think it's No. Yeah. Like if you're explaining, like you're losing. Like I think that's the mindset. I think the mindset of these people has been that the the people who start apologizing and back down too early will actually be be dogpiled. Um so therefore, they are incredibly defensive in in you, in, in you doing like giving ground. Do you think they would get dogpiled if they came out early? Oh, they would. Mm. Yes, but not not necessarily. Because you not, just need to look no further than the escapists. Yeah, I, mean, I was actually one of the first one to pretty much said, "All right, look, uh, we're kind of fucked up. Here's a forum where you can talk about this, and we're going to be changing our ethics policy going forward." And now they're. Kind of respected along the uh, Gamergate community, as far as I'm concerned. The, the the site itself and the community is uh uh the community is a little more allowing of this discussion now. But I think to say that that the escapist is you know completely devoid of fault at the moment. I think no, I didn't still... say that. I said oh that sorry. No, I'm just speaking from the perspective of a general view. Um, there are kind of, there are people within Gamergate who have kind of who are kind of treating the escapists as though they're all done and they need and they can fix things going forward. And I think they're still forgetting that there are potentially two significantly loud voices over there who Bob are and yeah uh, Chip Chipper Chip Chipperson <laughs> Chip Chipperson <laughs> and uh, 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 I guess the other one was what was it um, Movie Boob. Well, there's Movie, movie Bob, Bob, there's Jim yes. Sterling. And... Oh, Movie Bob, right. Poofy boob, jeez. Uh, <laughs> look, I think there's one crucial difference between uh, the escapist and the others, and that is that the escapist didn't write a hit piece. Yes. Like, I, I mean, you're right. You're right that they, they came out and apologized, and they they have gained so much trust from that uh, by comparison to everybody else. They, they, well, they have, didn't they have, write um, a hit piece, but they did the owner or had co-founder did come out and make that statement regarding literally who, right? I don't remember what you're referring to. Um, Greg Tito, I think it was. Didn't he come out with a statement saying that in the forums that they were not going to cover this story and that they give uh, 
something along the lines they give like the benefit of the doubt to the accused or something yeah. like that. But then I believe since then Greg Tito has a has yeah, but they do on as far as I know. So yeah, they write an article hit piece, but keep going with what you're saying, Matt. Yeah. Right. I mean, um, it's. I, I don't know that the escapist necessarily has ever been about gendered politics. I don't think they've. Like, I know uh, I've been reading Movie Bob's blog, and I know that he has, uh, you know, in like personally been about that, but I don't. I, I must admit that I don't read the escapist that much, but I see. I seem to remember them being very concerned with games and having fun with games and not really being that much about who's who or you know uh, how how misogynist whatever is going going on yeah um i mean like i'll come forward with the admittance that uh kind of prior to this i was still kind of clinging to the escape as a sort of a last bastion i mean i i saw the articles that were put out by uh other websites that I was using regularly, uh, no need to name names, I figure, but, like, The Escapist was kind of becoming the last place, and then now I remember that show reminded me of it, about the uh, article about Tito, uh, you know, it, it kind of put forth this, hmm, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think I should be here anymore, um, but prior to that, there was a lot that was influencing my views on it. Uh, I was starting to see that whole for lack of a better way to describe it, the uh, social justice thing kind of taking hold of certain stuff on the website. Uh, I was seeing, I was kind of seeing critical distance, well, there was the obvious one of critical distance uh, kind of sticking its nose in things and sort of giving this general commentary that was really, it was half unnecessary and, uh, you know, the other times it would be completely pointless. They ran this whole stupid article about how Game journalists are uh, having failures because they're jealous of, of all people, of PewDiePie's success when it comes to doing stuff about gaming on YouTube, and it kind of just broadly brushed off anything. It, it, it brushed off any other potential YouTube channels, it, like all of them. Didn't bother to mention, you know, the company that he's connected with, I believe, Polaris, or maybe that connection isn't there anymore. But, you know, it was ignoring things like, you know, machinima. It was ignoring stuff like uh, it, it, it literally any other person or group that was on YouTube that was discussing games. No, it went to PewDiePie. It's almost as bad as that CNN article that suggested that the Gamergate thing was started because of literally who number two, you know? Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Jennifer? Uh, I just... I. I don't understand these people, to be quite honest. I think the hubris is just, it's over the top. I, I don't understand the defense of people who do these things, and I just, I don't. It's still baffling to me. If I think about it too hard, I think I think brain cells just, just kill themselves. <laughs> so it's like a, a flock of dodos hitting yeah. the ball at once. Yeah. And I, it just it, it one thing I have noticed is like certain people who no matter how hard we try to drag the conversation away from that, they want to pull it back on themselves. And it's it people have to understand that there is no money in solving problems in this situation. There's none. Solving the problems is it's a death sentence for them. They don't want solutions. They don't want apologies. They don't want because all their money comes from the fact that they're controversial people. That's where all of it comes from. You take that away and what is left? What is left of any of these people if you take away the fact that they yell and they're mean to people? Like what where's the merit left at the end of it? I I, I think the thing is that I agree that this is a problem, but at the same time I recognize that there are a lot of places that base their um their audience or their their significance on this whole thing of we have people with controversial opinions right. and focus points and that's why we have our website. The problem is is that it, it goes back to what I said earlier. These people do not want to have actual discussions and debates. They and want they to have them. 
Sorry. Sorry, they don't want anything to have a consequence either. Right, exactly. You know, they want they want consequences for people who are like, hey, wait a minute, this is wrong. Then they'll call up your work and get you fired. But if they can say whatever they want, they can scream in your face. And if you're like, hey, stop, they're like, oh, my God, stop, stop silencing me. Like, the thing with the intel was ridiculous. You know, the people who have been shutting down discussions and cutting people off and just, like, making it so that you have nowhere to go to talk about this for two months now have the audacity to be like, this is silencing us by removing your ads that you don't have to pay us for. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm what gonna... kind of message are you going to send the future advertisers? The instant right. a respected advertiser lo leaves... You're going to fucking slander the shit out of them. Like, they would advertise with you. After what that. you're going to see is in three months, certain contracts won't be renewed. They Most people aren't going to pull their ads. They're going to just not renew. I think that's what what's going to happen. It's what happened with Intel, isn't it? Right. Well, no, no. They, they actually pulled completely. Oh, I had been under the impression that, that, it, that it was just renewal was about to come up. I thought that's the way they'd phrase it, but if they flat out... Maybe. Maybe. Oh, that they, explains they, why no, they're trust really me, mad. Trust me. They, they had an ongoing agreement with Gamma Sutra, and they were right. like, yeah, we we know we paid you for the next three months. You go ahead and keep that money, but don't put our name up there. Right. That's what they told them. And, you know, it, the Intel can be like, yeah, we're not taking sides. Um, and essentially, that's what they're doing. But obviously, the when, brands, you, with, I don't when think you do something... Sides. No, but when you do something like that, it still tells, like it, it, it tells the site, you know, you, you did, you, you took a position here, you took a side, you did something that was really against the interest of our consumers, and we can't have that. And well, they were what... forced to the other side. Economically, they were forced to the other side. And I, I actually really liked their statement because they're like, we don't side with the hatred of women, you know, but we're still pulling our ads. So they're, they're sort of tacitly admitting that they don't think the Gamergate side hates women, and they're right. I don't, I don't think anybody does. But, you know, the, it was just a very PR way of saying, yeah, uh, we're going to side economically with the consumer. <laughs> It was yeah, it was basically I, I think Internet aristocrats said last night or King of Poland, I don't remember who it was. But they basically said this was Intel's way of saying, Yeah, you know what, we don't want to be involved in this. Uh fuck you guys, we're out of here. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean the people you are sponsoring are acting unprofessional as shit and you do not want to be associated with that. Well they had it. they had a campaign Gamergate or against it. What's up? In, uh, sorry, Intel's upcoming campaign involved the hashtag gamer. I don't know if you guys noticed that. No, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, so why would they want to continue their campaign on Gamma Sutra when Gamma Sutra just said gamers are dead and gamers are over, right? Why would they want to do that? If you check out their, their tweets, they use that hashtag. It might, you know, this might be giving Intel a little bit too much credit, but you don't exactly need the latest i7... Uh, core i7 uh, with, uh, I don't know what they're called, 4650 or whatever, right? You don't need one of those to run an HTML game, right? Honestly. Right. You, 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 need, uh, you need the brilliant processes that they make to run shooters or to run, you know, hardcore games. You so, so let me just, uh, let me throw it out there. You're suggesting that, you know, maybe, maybe in a way, uh, the subtext to this is... Uh, we don't give a shit about your, you know, your HTML developed, no advanced coding, uh, not system resource heavy uh, games. They're, they're not a concern of us when it comes to our marketing, so all the more reason we have no interest in being involved with this. I mean, that's being very cynical and, uh, you know. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that was what <laughs> But but like suppose suppose some out somewhere out there in the future there's a, a bleak dark version of the world where there's nothing but HTML games and walking simulators, right? Are you gonna are you gonna need uh, a great uh, processor or aren't you? You're not gonna need one. It's I mean that this is and this is what people have been saying. Like the, the analysis and basically been you know Intel's core market is gamers and and those were the people getting slandered. But you know, 
the, the, these people are proponents of a style of games that would not need these processors. It's, as I say, it's cynical, but and I'm, I'm just putting it out there, you know? I don't think it's that far-fetched to suggest. Yeah. I mean, you can call them socially awkward, you can call them white, you can call them nerdy, you can call them whatever the fuck they want, but they spend money, and Intel wants them to spend money on them. And when and, you attack them, it's not going to happen. And I think that's the part that a lot of this uh, hostility towards Intel is forgetting. They they are they are completely still hell bent on that whole you know feelings and ideologies are what matter above all else. And it's like if you want to go where that matters, I I hear right now I hear um what what, what is it that uh, city in Switzerland that's really blowing up with uh, being concerned about hurt feelings and that kind of stuff? Or am I, I you know what I'm making a generalization there? Uh, there there are places you can go where you won't have to worry about that kind of thing, but you know, it, it, as much as we hate to say it, and as much as it's an unpleasant truth, the dollar is going to drive everything here. And as we've seen, based on certain behaviors from the opposition, they like to pretend that money doesn't matter, or they like to pretend that humanities are going to matter above all else. And in certain situations, that's true, but not in a market, not in a market period. That's that's not going to be the key influence when their voice isn't loud enough. I mean, they go on about how loud a, a, a vocal minority is and how much it needs to be taken seriously, but there's always going to be the factor of whether or not that... where if there's money coming from it. Yeah. All right, well, is there anything else or you guys want to jump into the next discussion point? Mm. I, 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 think the, <laughs> I, I think we're good, yeah. Right, is that enough Gamergate badgering? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that seems about right. I All mean, right. it's going to well, keep what about going the, uh, Actually, what about the gamer idea? Oh, Maybe. yeah. Um, well, first, I think it's a great idea that they're looking into stock investment. I mean, you know, a wise decision to figure out how to spend your money and make sure that you're going to potentially make more money off it, right? Yeah. But no, I'm talking about the IRC uh, chat that was leaked or spread or whatever the hell you want to say. Oh, I thought you were referring to GAMR, not uh. Were you referring to GAMR in all caps, or is this something else? I'm, oh, not aware I'm, of? Referring, I'm referring to GAMR on all caps and the IRC. My my problem with that is the guy who is trying to start that. One of them is one of the people who said. You know, is Gamergate anti-feminist? Duh, of course it is. And I'm like, are you serious? And which person was this? Um, Dominic. Been... He's uh, a guy who runs Zen of Design, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Zen of Design, dude. I'll look him yeah, up. Yeah, just Google that up. Yeah, keep going, though. So your problem is that that's the guy who's pitching it? Uh, Jennifer? Uh, sorry, what? The guy who runs Zen of Design is the one who was proposing it. Yeah, and that's your main—that's your major issue with it. Yeah, uh, when someone who's kind of anti-gamergate is like, it's the same thing with the gamer ethics thing, where they—they—they they, they were like, oh, you guys have to talk about it here, and then you look at the first gamer ethics tweets, and it's all them trying to divert attention onto big corporations that people already have a problem with. It's the same thing all over again. They're just trying to divert it. It, it's like trying to get people over to your house to hard sell them on Tupperware. Like, that's basically what that is. It was the same shit we've seen going on with other issues concerning this type of person in this group and crowd. It was a attempt to co-op things. It's just we like saw... the guy who did the open letter to the game community. Uh, yeah. I pointed out that he said a lot of stuff about gamers prior to making that list. And people alerted him that I was saying that, and he deleted all the tweets. Mm. Okay, so basically he made these very offensive remarks, and then he's coming out, and he's like, all right, look, you guys need to establish a leadership. And then people are like, hey, we're going to take advice from you because you already fucking hate us. And then he deleted these tweets. Yeah, this was a different guy. This was the um, uh, the game dev petition thing. This was earlier uh, on. Yeah, yeah, that game. Uh, Andreas, uh, what yeah. was, was his face? 
So oh, was, and, and was he, I, was I was he like, against Gamergate? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he was originally. Oh, oh goodness! I was I was looking. He was he was getting a lot of flack because there were people on that list that were that were distinctly being very you know very confrontational, and they had right. just you know signed their name on on, on the declaration that they they were against these things. So, ah, all right. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I don't. I don't trust anyone who wants to set up a leadership because they're basically asking you to give them a punching bag to attack and discredit. I would never, ever agree to that. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I thought it was a genuine idea at first. I was like, okay, you know, because the way I, things I was reading, I read the IRC chat, and I'll be honest with everyone listening and you guys, uh, I think a lot of people are really, really overreacting to the IRC leaks itself because... The very beginning of it was kind of touching on the idea that we should form this group, but then it really quickly devolved into just talking about Gamergate, and then near the end it kind of went on towards people thinking that Digra isn't involved, which I'm going to say for this argument isn't important, but, I, but the whole Digra angle is important. But then again, we don't know what came before or after that slice of the log. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. But at the same time, so a lot of people are overreacting to this gamer thing, but the Zen of Design uh, b blog post that went up yesterday, that was definitely a very straightforward pitch to create this leadership. And to me at first, it sounded like a good idea because, you know, it read like, okay, well, we already have these people that are not leaders, but they're so prestigious that they might as well be leaders. They have such mm -hmm. a weight to their voice that, and everyone respects them. So it's like, okay, this doesn't seem like a bad idea, but then I talked with some more people, and I've, I've come to the agreement that with what you were saying, Jennifer, we are making a punching bag for them to go after, and furthermore, just why would we switch up what is already working? I mean, we just got Intel to pull ads. Yeah. Why would we stop? Beware yeah. of Greeks bearing gifts, right? You know, <laughs> I, it, exactly. a lot of people have been making the comparison to... um. To occupy Wall Street, I felt with this thing, or, or at least some people have, and they talked about how you know we need to be careful with everything we do because the moment we slip up and fuck up like that movement did, that's it. The movement could be over. And I, I that that thing that you mentioned of establishing figureheads makes me think of that uh, interview with those two people who had really awkward names for themselves and talked about stuff that wasn't even related to the issue. I mean, we do have people who will actually discuss what Gamergate is about. They'll make a pretty strong focus on what it is about, but there's too much of an opportunity for someone to come in and hijack that for whatever needs they see fit. There, there's too much of an opportunity for it to go wrong and be twisted by the other people. And when you factor in the other biggest problem, which is attempting to find a middle ground as we've had in the past, when we've seen so many people continuously spit on that middle ground, or, you know, if I could make a reference to it, uh, the issue that happened with uh, the Sargon stream, what was it, last week, about how there was an attempt to have an equal debate, you know, we saw how we saw how quickly that kind of went south, you know, no, no Here, offense to Sargon, you know. Here's the thing with middle grounds. If you agree to the middle ground, and then they pull something, and you're, you bail on it, you look bad. Even if you had every reason in the world to bail, that's not how it appears. Yeah. There is no middle ground here, unfortunately. It is, it is consumer versus, you know, whatever. And and the thing is, it's just there there can't be a middle ground because they want the consumer to assume responsibility that they have no obligation to morally, ethically, legally to do so. Like there was one guy saying if if consumers would just be the bigger person, this would all go away. And it's like, that's a threat. And, you know, it's just, you can't do that. You can't be like, oh, well, consumers need to take some responsibility. No, they don't. And anyone who says that they do is, is trying to pull something. They're trying to pull a fast one. Yeah, and they gave up the middle ground when they attacked with all these articles, right? I mean, right. the middle ground would have been them apologizing for the articles made. The middle ground could have been them covering the Zoe Quinn scandal. Then the, middle the middle ground, ground could have been, been them, them not publishing. Talking to anyone. 
talking yeah. to anyone. Because, like, there's the thing, like, That's even the exciting. articles they get posts by female devs, they don't include me. I get added as, like, a supplementary article, if that. They don't care. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unnerving. The whole, the whole gamer thing, it, it, at best, it was misguided, you know, but I, I honestly think it's worse. You, you, you gotta, you gotta I, I, think about, you, you know, no, like, just, Mm. If if there's uh, if there's consumers or not even just consumers, if there's people who are offended by something, what what do they do? They they yeah. Sometimes they form movements. Sometimes they form you know organizations. Sometimes that works for them. But a lot of the time, they just speak their mind. They just speak their mind one at a time, and it 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 helps. It pushes things in the right direction. Like the idea that. We would we would establish some sort of fringe group of 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 gamers that that uh, would be pushing uh, against the mainstream. I mean, honestly, come on, you would you would be able to dismiss it, or you would be able to co-opt it as some people have feared. I'm I'm not sure that would ever happen, but it it at the very least you would you would paint it as a. <sighs> As anybody within that organization that said anything extreme, right, that would suddenly become something that, that would be cast light on. It would be used to undermine everybody within that group. Let everybody speak as individuals. Let everybody be critics of what has gone on. And you can, you can, only, you can only approach people by their criticisms and not who they are. And that's, that's where we will win because... Well, we I say, but that's where the the movement will win. Um, that's where the the movement for better ethics will win, it, it, because it's right. There's there's no need to create an organization agitating for what is right. You just need to say it loudly and over and over. It's gonna, uh, yeah. Um, the middle ground for me is is a new is new media. It's a new it's new outlets. It's more people rising to the top as far as press goes, that is the middle ground to me. Us giving our support to new sites and those new sites coming up beside the sites that we already have, that to me is the only middle ground we're going to see. Yeah, like spellsfire.com. Or goodgamers.us. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I just gave you an opening to to chill a little. That wasn't intentional, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna jump on these opportunities whenever I can. Well, but we no, all don't blame you. Nobody's, I, 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 and this is the thing. Nobody's going to denounce. Uh, nobody's gonna denounce anybody trying to do something to better themselves because the whole point is we're trying to better it because we hope that our voice is going to be the ones that people want to hear going forward. Uh, considering, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Here, here's the thing. New media is going to pull everyone into the center, right? So mm -hmm. the people that are being very aud audacious and you know offensive, they're going to start losing views to these other sites, and gamers are going to start going to the new sites instead. So you, you will, by by default, you're going to pull more moderate people into the middle, which is what needs to happen. Agreed. I mean, a, a good I way. Tear down the old one, tear down the old walls, and build them up. Yeah. You know. And, and this is what I was loving. This is kind of sort of what drove me into Gamergate. I love that we were seeing this rise up of this rejection of a certain group of people or certain people in particular having the final say on the voice. It was, if anything, one of the best things about Gamergate is that it shattered that whole idea that certain people were going to have control. It was saying that, no, we're going to give the voice back to the gamers. We're going to let people speak for themselves and stop having certain people be mouthpieces. We're going to let everybody have an opportunity to represent themselves and speak for who they are. And I think yeah. Not Your Shield was the best representation of that. Yeah, Not Your Shield is beautiful. It's great. I got the... I was invited to do a stream once with them. It was fantastic. I would do it again. But anyway, you guys want to talk some about actual games now, or do you? We can officially stop talking about Gamergate if you guys want. Because <laughs> I know everyone, it's it's the uh, movement on everyone's lips, and we've you been know, talking about it for a while. What's up, Bird Gang? 
the the whole thing. My last comment on middle ground is: I think the reason people want middle ground, even still on the GamerGate side, is because they want some concept of resolution. They want they want they want things to, for lack of a better way to say it, come to an end. They just want some of the insanity and some of the stress and discomfort with all this to stop. And a lot of people, even myself, are naively hopeful that middle ground might create that resolution that we're looking for. But uh, there was an article that I think Milo posted up the other day, or a statement that I made on Twitter that, you know, much like any other movement, this shit isn't going to end. There, There's no hope for a middle ground. The idea of a quick and peaceful resolution is a pointless thing at this point, because the moment that happens, things go back to the status quo. And exactly. we've established that this status quo isn't working for the gaming community, because so many people have seen that they can get in there and manipulate that status quo for their personal agenda. And I think that is why people are pissed off and why they're just not going to give up, because I, the reformation I, has to happen. I think it's amazing that they can refer to the consumers as the status quo when they've been setting up the status quo for like 10 years. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. They're like, oh, you guys are the status quo and you're afraid of, of it being torn down. You're, you're reactionaries. And I'm like, how can how can we be the status quo if you're the ones with all the power in the situation? Yeah. Because they got us into that delusion that we really had any power, that we had any say. Right. Because they feared us, and I think that's what it is. That's the only reason we've seen them push back is because... They're afraid of us, and they're afraid that if they don't respond to our intimidation with equal hostility and intimidation, that we're just going to back down. That's why they're resorting to doxing. They're resorting to sending syringes in the mail. That's why they're doing all the shit they do, because it's just one giant game of chicken. And they're starting to finally maybe realize, even though they're still barking with their hostility that they are, that we will stand in the face of that train that they have coming our way. And I think, for the most part, everyone is willing to get splattered into tiny bits by that train and still talk even into the throes of death as they enter into it. Whoa there. Throes of death. All right. Enough gamer game. Yes. Let's talk about actual games. Now, I was going to touch on this earlier, but I wanted to bring up the IRC and gamer discussion. But what do you guys think actually constitutes a video game? Because we've seen a lot of, uh, for the sake of argument, I will call them games now, but they were very debated as to whether or not they were a game. You know, games like Thomas Was Alone or Gone Home, you know, more of a interactive fiction like this. Do you think that these are games or not games? Or what do you think it takes to be called a game? Or Two. do you think the whole argument is ridiculous? Two Thomas Was Credit. It's a, it has one of the more things that I, pe- that I think people uh, cry out for is that that core th- uh, experience of challenge and or problem solving. I think that's, at least from my perspective, that's what I go to for video games. I'm going there because I want to be challenged. I want to have an experience, but I want my experience to be more than just me staring at a screen or reading words or hearing music. And games are going to involve that level of interactivity that I want. Okay, do you think that... So, are there non-games? Do you think that there are products out there that should not be rightfully called video games? <sighs> I think it's I think it's like how we have different types of books, right? Like, you have... You have novellas, you have short stories, you have... And then you have novels, Self-help books, right? yeah. Right, and then you've got like your your editorials, your newspapers, journals, things like that. I think, yeah, I think people what people aren't understanding is when they're saying something isn't a game, they don't necessarily mean that that it doesn't have any merit. They're just saying, I don't consider this as much of a novel. I don't consider you know Coraline, which is a novella, as much of a novel as War and Peace. You know, like that's just what really what they're saying. They're not saying. Oh, get get out of here, and and I'm gonna burn your house down. They're just saying that, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe I don't. Uh, maybe as a gamer, someone may not want to hear about it being praised the same way like Bioshock is, or you know, uh, Skyrim or something like that. Like they just they don't want to hear 
it being put on a pedestal just because, oh, look, somebody did something and it's about this particular subject. I think that's the problem people have is, like, the championing it with scores that are higher than, like, you know... Yeah. My my good metric is if a mid-level to large studio put out this game, would it have got the same score? If the answer is no, and I'm not saying you can't consider indie dev budgeting or anything like that, I'm just saying, would you give this as good of a score if it was not A, made by a per certain person, B, was made by, you know, somebody who was already known kind of thing? Well, and I think this is, I, I think your point brings up why we're starting to see a, a somewhat of a rejection of review scores because people, and unfortunately it is a very small amount, people are starting to realize that these review scores are pointless because you can't care, compare game A with game B. Um, I love the fuck out of uh, Supergiant's Transistor. I think it's an absolutely great game. It's probably one of my favorite indie games of all time, but I would be absurd to suggest that it compares in any way whatsoever with other favorites of mine, such as uh, Okami, or even Dragon Quest VIII. The, the idea that they're on par with each other, purely from a contextual level, it is it, it doesn't make sense to compare, the, to compare the games. Yeah, but do you think that they're all actually games? Yeah, I think to, I think to some degree, at, at a core point, they all have some value of being called a game. And if I can go back to, did you want to say something, Jennifer? Yeah, just just real quick. My how I look at it is what these people want is Professor Layton to have all the puzzles stripped from it and still have it be considered the same as the original Professor Layton. Like that's what it feels like. Oh uh, yeah. 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 I had uh, something I wanted to touch back on with you, Jennifer, but you can go ahead and say your piece, Matt. I got, I got it in my mind. All right. That's, uh, that's fortunate. Um, uh, honestly, this, this discussion of whether something's a game or not a game reminds me a whole lot of the discussion of whether uh, video games are art. Uh, you know, that, that's something that took place, um, I don't know, 10 years ago? five years ago, even today, you know, more recently, there's been discussions of whether or not video games could be art or were art. Like, the, the thing with these classifications is uh, having a certain classification automatically carries a certain merit. Okay, so you can't... If The, the, the statement that, that uh, something is not a game has... It might not have a meaning to you, but it has a meaning to a lot of people. Um, in my opinion, you know, you can't, you can't say that that there's just that there's not a, a a sort of a concept that is carried with the game word that you are robbing from a title by saying no, you can't, you can't call yourself that. And it, it's the same thing with the art, right? You, by saying video games aren't art, you're robbing, you're robbing it of a property that. Uh, like maybe not intentionally, but but at least to people who listen to you, you are definitely you're definitely not being nice to it. Uh, is is what I want to say. So, and and to to be quite honest, a lot of people recognize something like Gone Home or you know uh, Soy Quinn's Depression Quest. They do recognize them as games. You know if 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 uh, if you talk to them casually in conversation, that's what that's what they would think of it as, because there's not really anything else to think of it as. So there's a number of reasons why I feel like, you know... It, you are, can I chime in with something? Yeah, sure. Um, you, you make the comment about dismissing games as art as being a bad idea. I, I'd like to throw in the very concept of art itself. Uh, I would say that if something, and this argument I think is a pretty strongly made one, if something like Jackson Pollock's paintings can be called art, I think there's definitely an argument that can be made that there, you can call games having some sort of art as well. Even yeah, if it's yeah. not all games, they have the potential. To dismiss oh. it as not even being possible, I think is what pisses off gamers the most, that uh, the games can't be called art. They're... they're People, certain people are dismissing the mere possibility of games being art. 
yeah, that's absolutely that's absolutely where the the controversy uh, of that uh, like rides. You know, the the dismissiveness, the the snootiness, the the idea that uh, you know independent games developers wouldn't be able to get arts funding uh, because uh, for some reason, you know, they're not uh, they're not I don't know contemporary enough. Like that's, in, but but I do feel like we we shouldn't. Now, now that we're in a position where we're gamers, right? We shouldn't necessarily try to rob, so to speak, uh, French things of of their name. I, I, I feel like that's. I mean, obviously, a, a person who feels something isn't a game. You know, that's your that's your thing. You, you're entitled to your opinion on what is and what isn't a game. It's it's largely something that, you know, you you know it when you see it. So, yeah, that's that's fair. But I would I would you know, go to bed to say, come on, try not to, try not to, <laughs> to, to, to be on, on, on non-games ass about this, because honestly, they are experiences that have a right to exist, and I'm sure there are people who enjoy them. I'm not one of them, but, well, that's my piece anyway. Okay, well, I want to touch on what Jennifer was saying earlier with books, and I thought that was a fantastic example, how you were saying that there are... <clears throat> You know, there's novels, there's short stories, there's novellas, and, you know, they aren't really insulting to call a work of fiction as any of those. So do you think maybe we should have something like that for games itself? Maybe like a game light or yeah, a play game? Yeah, I mean, I would it, would be hard to, it would be hard to coin a fucking official term, but... Do you right. think that would be a good well, idea? Well, that's why we have fucking linguistics professors and, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of shit. Well, and that's what I find funny is they don't want to do that. Like, wouldn't it be cool for one of them to come up with a name for these things? And they're like, oh, no, you got to call them games. And it's like, well, you know, most most linguistics people would jump at the chance to, to rename something and, you know, like interactive fiction or, you know, a virtual novel, things like that. Like, I think some of these things are a bit above a virtual novel, but they are in that, in that realm. Like, why wouldn't you want to... Like game Ella doesn't sound quite as as good as no novella, but I mean there's yeah. there's there's other words they could use. Yeah, they they could absolutely. Make well, there absolutely is, and actually there had there are a few people who have. Um, I uh, I took a a computer game theory class way back in two thousand and six or something at my university, and um, there um I I've I've came across uh. A paper from, well, uh, I think it was actually a PhD dissertation or something like that, uh, by a Norwegian fellow in 1995 discussing the various types of uh, ergodic literature, he called it. Like, that would be literature that's navigated in a non traditional fashion. You know, a book is something where you start at one end and you read each page and you, you kind of have a system for going through it. Ergodic literature, apparently, uh, according to this guy, at least, would be literature where you might jump around in the book or there might be some system to it. Okay, this also applied to, of course, computer games, right? So there are there are people who would say, you know, this is, you know, let's let's take Depression Quest. This would be a, a piece of ergodic literature and or maybe a cybertext, right? Uh, because it's not a hypertext. You can't navigate it freely. That's also apparently a definition at some place. But see, the, the thing about these definitions, right, they are academic definitions. They're not definitions that have been incorporated into people's vocabularies. They are, for all intents and purposes, they live at, at universities. They don't, they don't actually move out. Um, and, and they are useful when you have to distinguish, you know, the various features. And, you know, I absolutely believe that if we saw more depression quests, if we saw more... Uh, of, of these types of games on Steam, for instance, it would absolutely become a thing to to call it novella or something. But I just I just don't think we are there yet, at least in terms of needing yeah. to distinguish that. There is there is one term that's been thrown a lot, around a lot for like companies making games out of their training programs. It's called gamification, but that's about all I've seen as far as that goes. I yeah. think there. They're resisting them being called anything but games. Yeah, and but I think, think it's kind of weird when you look at that. it from a whole. Like, if you really take a step back, I mean, we don't look at what we use now. We use first-person shooter. We use role-playing game. Like, we use these words to 
give the product a new meaning, to give it a new spin. We don't say it's a... I'm not even sure how to describe it, but... You know, first-person shooter, we don't say it's a first-person shooter game. We just say this is a first-person shooter, you know? Like, it, these are identities can, that can stand on their own. And yet, we're there's an aversion to having one for video games that are a lot lighter on content. Or am I going crazy? Um, no, you're talking about genres. Yeah, the, absolutely. Um, Japan seems to be better at, at classifying different things, too. I don't know why, but they just... They, they immediately put names on things like that. Well, I mean... A big thing in Japan is that I think there's a decent bit of the gaming audience out there that considers things like visual novels uh, to be games to some degree. I mean, you right. see you see content-heavy ones like uh, Clanad being kind of classified as games because there's a multitude of decision paths and all that kind of stuff that the player has to be considerate of. They have to make sure they're making the right decisions in order to be sort of challenged to see... To, to advance relationship, but the problem with those kinds of games, there, there are two problems. The first is when it's, you know, uh, not that there's anything wrong with this, but in terms of its relation to games, it, it's kind of where it gets, you know, sort of questionable. Uh, when it just leads into it being blatant, out, blatant exp explicit content, um, and when the other problem is the game not having enough depth in terms of the relationship development. There isn't, you know, we, we see a light focus on that kind of gameplay content. You would see something like that in a role-playing game, but even role-playing games do that in Injustice by having the relationships within the games come down to a A or B option. Adding complexities to that kind of thing shows that, you know, even the Japanese gaming audience is open to the idea of considering that kind of games. Okay. If I'm making sense with what I'm saying there. Uh, a little bit. What about yeah. you, Matt? Or Jennifer, or either of you? Oh, I just... I, I do think we're going to get into this thing where if we're not careful with how we catalog these things... Like, I don't... I wouldn't go this far, but, like, Steam has, like, you know, games, software, etc. I think... I wouldn't go that far as to segregate it that far, but if we're not careful, if you catalog them too much, and there's so many of them, because some of them do tend to be easier to make you're going to get just flooded with these things, and people are just going to be like, oh, the, the Steam catalog is now useless. How do I sort through this stuff? I don't want to see this stuff. And I think that's going to lead to some resentment too, because when you see games like that getting heralded for no reason other than, you know, who knows who, and people are just going to be like, well, I don't know what games are, are you know, the kind of games that I want to play anymore. They're just, they're everywhere. I do think that that maybe a, a more maybe not top level classification, but at least raised a little bit more would be a middle ground for most people. Yeah, the and this thing with sorting games at all by genre. I mean, the genres already are kind of fucked up when you get into like yeah. action adventure. It's like, all right, well, what the hell? Or role playing game. It's like, oh, it's Legend of Zelda and RPG. That's one of the classic uh -huh. arguments. <laughs> and you know, you are right, though. I mean, you can't have too little because otherwise it kind of becomes useless. But at the same time, if there's too many, it's easy to miss games yeah. because they're filed under something else. What's I'd that? like to throw out a potential suggestion as to why that is. And this is one of those moments where, you know, I would like to flaunt that people on the supporting of Gamergate side are trying to be this op have this open-minded perspective on how to handle things. And so this is one of those examples. When they're talking, when they're responding with this resentment and this hostility towards being classified as something as like being called gamification or a game L or whatever term you want to use for it. I think they're responding with that because they fear their potential uh, customer penetration would then drop if they are put into a classification. Uh, it's going to drop of, anyway if we're not careful. <laughs> right. Th think of how, uh, you know, when it comes to the mass market, if it isn't if it doesn't have the qualification of something like shooter or military or realistic, any of those tags, sometimes more often than not can almost, I, I would say, guarantee 
uh, a, a, a mild su- mo- a modicum of success marketing wise. I mean, look at how, as much as I hated it, I still kind of enjoyed it. Uh, multiplayer was shoehorned into Dead Space. You know, the, the drive for that, I would say, was probably from purely nothing other than a marketing perspective. Now, whether or not that actually resulted in some better uh, sales, that's up to question. But there might actually be some legitimate concern from the people making those sort of quote-unquote non-games or those game ellas. That may be where they, they're concerned. They're concerned from a marketing standpoint. Well, the you can call me that, crazy, but I'm pretty sure EA at the time made a mandate that all their games needed to have some multiplayer element. Yeah, you know, and I think that's thing what, happened. And I think it's because there was a marketing drive for it. It was like, if we put multiplayer in it, it's going to sell better. And I am suggesting that that is a possibility, but for all intents and purposes, I don't believe that that is what these people who are making these game mellas are truly concerned about. I don't know that that is their primary concern above everything else. I think there's... There, there, there are other reasons behind why they respond to hostility with getting their own classification, so to speak. Well, um, I, I, an informed consumer is a good consumer, right? So, you know, it, it would make sense to have it if it's if it's a, a game miller. Uh, you know, it would be nice to have it classified as such in at any store that you're that you're visiting, so that you have a, a heads up about what you're about to see. Um, I don't know. Like, e- there's nothing wrong with at least classifying these games. Yep. Nothing at all. That's that's my stand on it. But e- I hope that we can that we can keep keep calling them games or yeah. game likes or something like that at least. Just to just to put in the point that you know, as 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 people who enjoy this medium, we're not trying to to take something from them because I. I know that people say, no, 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 it's fine. They're just experiences. They are not. They're not lesser than games just because they're not games. Eh, could we? Could we just not call them games then? I, I, I don't feel we lose much by doing that, at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing that seems to be able to se- separate them from the, you know, AAA games is price. Really, I mean, if I see yeah. a game that's ten or fifteen dollars, I can expect a lot less content. In terms, of if it were priced at sixty, I mean that's not well, really the case, but that seems to be safe at the moment. I, I think when you're coming forward with, and this is speaking from a personal perspective, I know I've responded host, uh, with hostility uh, towards Gone Home, not from its content or uh, because of its lack of gameplay. Well, I was annoyed by that. I was more bothered by the price point. To be honest, I didn't think I got my money's worth. And my criticism of that was being swept under the rug with the oh-so-beloved uh, response, oh, you just don't get the game. It's, it's three deep, five me. You know, that, that, that was a lot of the responses that came from uh, supporters of the game or the developers themselves. Maybe, maybe not those exact words from the developers or the people who had worked on it or even the journalists, but there was a general response of, it, it, it's too much intellectually for you to get why the game is good. And that is a completely inappropriate way to respond to. That would be that would be like clinging to Dead Space and saying that, oh, well, you just didn't like it because it was super gory and over the top, and therefore you're a bad person for that. It, you know, you, people have to accept that there's going to be audiences or potential players who are just not going to like the content that's being offered. And I think that was a lot of the hostility we saw coming out of the responses towards Gone Home. There was this general speaking out of, this is not my cup of tea, this is not something I like, and they just did not like that reaction. Yeah, Yeah, and I think people have to accept that, like, I don't think anyone would have cared if it didn't get, like, sung from the rooftops how great it was and then they're like oh by the way this triple a game is bad because sexism like that that's that's what they did they were like gone home is the best thing ever it's so great and then it was like oh by the way i'm gonna go crap on this other game because it's not it mm-hmm. didn't fit my ideology it's like you can't do that 
Like, they seriously didn't put any na- Like, there was a side-by-side comparison of two reviews around the same time. One was Gone Home, one was another game. I forget which game it was, but they... One of the negatives, there was, like, no negatives to Gone Home. It was just, like... Oh, uh, the classic. They called Phoenix Wright. Oh, I remember what it was. It was Phoenix Wright. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. They it was, said uh... Phoenix Wright was too linear. That was IGN, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Phoenix Wright was too linear, but Gone Home was, like, the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like with a lot of these reviews... Yeah, I am putting on my tinfoil hat of... Uh, you know they want to give, they want to reserve good scores for companies that pay them or whatever. But uh, so, when someone says like, "Oh, this game was linear" or "it wasn't engaging," like these are very fleeting uh, criticisms that I feel are only brought up so that they can somehow justify a negative score. Phoenix Wright was an evolution of virtual novels. That's the thing; it's supposed to kind of be linear, so it was just. Like, in Japan, that's not a bad thing. This genre is linear. This genre isn't. Like, they just kind of do that. So it, it's always funny to me when, like, Western reviewers are like, oh, this game is linear. I'm like, yes. That, it, that's hilarious. almost a feature. <laughs> it's hilarious that a place that is often criticized as being the most xenophobic and exclusive places can sometimes be the most open-minded and inclusive places at times. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, that is that is interesting, but you know, Japan is weird. But that besides, that the the problem with criticizing the lack of nonlinearity in something like Phoenix Wright, right? That's you know, okay, maybe, but why would that make it better? Like <laughs> your, your your criticism. All books are linear. How about that? You know, except yeah. choose your own adventure. All books are linear, so it's just mm-hmm. kind of like. And I do see Phoenix Wright as an evolution of the visual novel, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm I've actually got mine open and on right now, the new one. So I've played every one. I don't see a problem with that. They do, which is funny that they do, considering Gone Home is. There's nothing not linear about it. To decry that it's more that it's more uh, less sorry less linear than something like Phoenix Wright is what you and other people had a problem with, right? Yeah, but at the same time, I think we're using linear way too much as an insult. I mean, there are plenty yeah. of really fucking good games that are linear, like the old kind of yes, any Mega Man that, game. I disagree that saying something is linear is a bad thing. I think there are moments where we're looking for linearity. We're looking for a if a, a better lack of way to describe it, a lack of intense challenging or uh, forcing of outside of the box thinking. I don't think there is a problem with that because sometimes well, it's not necessarily restricting to linearity. I mean, Portal was a very linear game in terms of how mm-hmm. you progress forward, but how you actually yeah. solve the puzzles had a variety of answers. I think when we're referring to linearity, I think we're, at least for me, I'm just accusing it of not having a whole lot of di- diverging paths. And sometimes I think that's completely acceptable. But when it is a thing that is present within the game and people shrug it off and say, well, that's not a problem or that's not a big deal, you shouldn't be pointing that out, that's why people you know, respond with hostility. It's like, no, you have to recognize that there's linearity. Yeah, there are going to be arguments made for Gone Home for having the diverging story paths of you digging through the stuff that's around the house and, oh, there's more to it, but it's not at the core of the gameplay or the core focus of the story, right? I mean, those are completely optional, non-beneficial to the main experience. Right. Right, but... You know, I think you should also, you know, recognize that there's a, a difference between linearity of um, of uh, of the story itself and linearity of the experience. But regardless of that, you can't just you can't just say, oh no, you should have done it different. If like it's like saying a movie should have been in 3D. Yeah. Like if why? Okay, what would that have added? That would be my my follow up question, and it would come immediately. Right? There's no. Yeah, there's, there's, 
right. You 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 can, you can't just. I don't know what's a good example. Um, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane should have been in 3D. I would be like, if you said that, I would be like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> like, why would you? Why would you do that? Why? You know what? I think I think 12 Angry Man Angry Men would have been better with uh, dubstep on the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think with another linearity, you need to remember that a lot of times what they're sacrificing is freedom of, I guess, exploration or mm -hmm. navigating for more of a focused experience. Like Shadow of the Colossus, for example. I mean, yeah, you could run around and go anywhere, but you fought these Colossus in a very specific order. Right. And stuff like that. With like, Or a better example would be Half-Life 2 or Half-Life 1. You know, very straightforward level progression, but it was very, very focused. Like, they knew where the player was going to be with a you know, in a particular scene or chapter. They knew where the player was going to come from, and they were able to set pieces around that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't like linear being used as a negative word. But, you know, I get what you all are saying. Well, yeah, it's, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't at least be a, a default negative word, because it's, it's clearly really ambiguous what the, the reviewer means when he says it's, it's too linear. Right. If he was more specific, there would there would be no real issue. Like if if you know, it would be fair for somebody to criticize uh, any game for lacking linearity if he had a specific reason why it was bad. You know, but that's but that's what it comes down to, right? And I'm pretty sure in the in the case of uh, Phoenix Wright, why would you? Why would? How do you envision this being better? With branching stories, I'm not. I'm not sure I follow that. That's and an actually. Even really then, good there's a, even then there's the argument of like, it was linear, yeah, but are we gonna really enter the realm of what the game isn't should be used against it? It's like okay, well, there isn't a fucking first person shooter section in Phoenix. You know, games. actually, there's yeah. a there's a really great game that I think you can make a comparison of. Uh, this is what a potential. Uh, non-linear version of Phoenix Wright might look like. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to make anybody angry or happy because I'm saying this, but look at um, look at L.A. Noir and look at how the quote-unquote diverging paths of that game really did not uh, change the linearity of the experience. I mean, it flaunted that, you know, cases could go down in different ways and you could have different outcomes, but much like it or... Uh, I guess maybe even The Walking Dead to some degree, you know, the, the the potential diverging paths ended up converging back onto one point, and I think that's what you would have if you tried to force that into uh, Phoenix Wright. You would still come back to the final verdict being the same in the end. Or, at the least, the overall story arc of the game would have a similar resolution with minor little details changed here and there. Okay. And I don't think that's that that should hold anything against it either. Just like yeah. with any other thing, it's just like it's now kind of like it is. It is a dirty word. It's the same as like you've got to have every option on a character now, or you're you're saying something about a, an entire group of people. Like if I want to make a game about a, a, a man, the male protagonist. Like, take Gabriel Knight that's coming out soon. Like, I mean, that's kind of a sacred cow, and people don't say, well, why can't it be Gabriella Knight? But they are saying that about newer games. It's like, why can't I be a woman in this game? Well, you know, I see that for some games, but they want all games to have always an option to be both or everything or nothing. It just... I get to a point where I'm like, look, you know, this is the story that I want to tell. I don't generally make games where you can't pick both, but I do think other people should be allowed to do that without it being a, you get minus the point because this game is about a man. I just, I don't yeah. get that. It's very hard. I mean, and you don't see that about any other statistics with a character. I mean, part of it is because that's who the character is. The character is a woman or the character is a man. You know, you can't be like, all right, well, how come Master Chief doesn't like the aliens, you know? How come Master Chief isn't a woman? How come he isn't left-handed? How come he isn't in a wheelchair? How come he isn't this yeah. or that? You could say this about... You could change any aspect of the character and 
raise a question of why he is or isn't something. That uh, Master Chief being in a rocket powered wheelchair would be pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty cool. That would, that would, that would add a whole new concept to yeah. uh, weaponized minority. Right? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, all statements made on this uh, cast are yeah. representatives of our own opinions. <laughs> well, I'm just saying <laughs> the opinion that, of good right? gamers. I mean, US. Be... Yeah, it, oh, that that is a disclaimer. They they talk about. I've seen that word come up a lot lately, and how that wants to happen. But I mean, think about it. think think of how that would be a, a, a hilarious personification of that. Someone in a wheelchair who is left-handed. But is the badass who's going to save everybody? Yeah, and he's in a wheelchair, and the yeah. dropship the dropship lands, and it, you know, kind of drops the landing ramp, and then he's just <laughs> seeing him wheel down, and he's got a rifle in his hands. That would be really, really cool, and, and yeah, yeah, w- in a wheelchair, and they're black, and they're a girl, and they uh, <laughs> they have psychological issues that they have to deal with as well. All right. What's game of the funny year. Is, is, is if you re- read the Halo novels, he actually does have some issues with that. He's not completely superhuman. Yeah. Well, we saw it finally come, and this is why I loved the hell out of Halo 4. We finally saw that come out in his relationships and engage, in, uh, interaction with Cortana and the other people around him. We saw him being very dismissing at times towards other people. We saw him seemingly dependent on Cortana at times. I think narratively and in terms of the potential character development that's going forward, I know peop- a lot of people are hating on Halo 4 and saying it's going to destroy the series, but I saw it as the point in the series where I am more interested and invested than ever. I don't know if anybody else felt that way about it. Yeah, I think that like the the interesting part about Halo was like the the PTSD type environment that they were raised in as children to to be fighters. Yeah, I, I don't quite remember all of the novels, but uh, yeah, like they there was an element of, of him being sort of a a PTSD type victim. So it it did yeah, and the games didn't really portray it well, but. There are there are deep storylines that you can have with these things, and I've got no problem with that. And I honestly do think that sometimes you you rob yourself of a storyline by saying, "Hey, you know, I need to have every option," because it it does inflate or make make the the main character sort of a puppet, and you you can only go so far into their psyche when when you change certain things about them, or when you can change anything about them. Like I really like Saints Row. You know, they did a really good job of some of that stuff, but I think that doesn't work for all games. Well, it's... Uh, yeah, it definitely it's, doesn't. It's, Go ahead. Yeah, it's it, it's a ridiculous notion. I I want to step on it and crush it. it. That's how I feel about the idea that you need to be able to be similar to the main character of a game. I, I understand that... I understand the larger concepts of representation and why it's important to have representations of, uh, you know, various uh, various um, demographic demographic groups uh, in the media we enjoy. It, it it makes sense. It it makes people who have less feel like they belong. I I get this. Okay, but the idea that you can't do uh, media that has uh, very specific player characters is it, it, uh, I, it's honestly, I feel like the the biggest crime in gaming, uh, at least from a story perspective, has been that so many games do not have a main character. I like it, it's like telling gamers or, or expecting gamers to be be so lacking of you know willingness to empathize that they they are not willing to step into the shoes of another type of human being. I, I don't understand it. It stories flow more fully, and you're able to be more engaged when you try to walk a day in, in the shoes of another person. And that's what I want to see. And this this PC notion of of uh, getting rid of that it it really really ah uh, it's, it's counter to everything I enjoy about stories and games anyway. You're saying that things like not having a main character are the same problem as 
what there is with ha trying to have too many factors of what a character is. Trying to have all those options, trying to include all that stuff, ends up, if I'm getting this right from what you're saying, kind of ruining the direction or ruining the focus of it, right? Yeah, it, it yeah, and it ruins the opportunity to to be like to have a feeling that you are somebody else, and that's that feeling, that notion, that ability to empathize with somebody who's going through something that is radically different from what you're going through. And and I feel like you know a, a game like Depression Quest, it's to just take a, a wild example, like you can't choose who the main character is in that. You can't choose the features. Like the gender is set, the 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 name is set, that everything is set, right? Uh, or yeah. am I getting that wrong? Yeah. No, I be I believe that's right. There's no yeah. there's no freedom in decision of how things start, or what level of depression you have, or yeah, you know but, what caused your depression. Yeah, and, and that it would be ridiculous to say that the game is worse off for any of that, because the the entire point of that experience is to walk a day in in another person's shoes, and. I'm not saying that you can't have your Skyrim or your your whatever with the fancy character right. creators. Right, there's I, a place for everything. Yes, absolutely. Don't don't get me wrong. I just I wish we had more games where there was a a specific main character going through specific emotional things, so that I could try to relate to those experiences in a different way. I always liked the series where you sort of had the hero that was more unintentional because they tended to have a more uh, in-depth backstory. Like I, I don't know if a lot of people played this game, but I really liked the Shadow Hearts series, even if it kind of went downhill after a bit uh, because the guy didn't want to be a hero. He was kind of a a cad, basically. Like you know, there's there's some not so great things about him and he just eventually had really no choice but to to help it wasn't like yeah I'm gonna run off and be a hero now it was kinda like ah oh, crap not this again and that was just kind of interesting I guess they call it the anti-hero yeah yeah the guy who's not really supposed to be right. in nature but is the protagonist that's an anti-hero. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's just dumb. I mean, I hate to boil it down to something so simple as that, but if people can't just accept what a fictional character is beyond well, I just didn't like the character or I didn't connect with him, I mean, I understand that. Well, and that's the problem. Flat out yeah. hating a character based upon what he isn't or what she isn't, that's dumb. It extends beyond just people having problems with characters. This is what we're seeing happen with games and the game audience and all that stuff is in general. Rather than rather than having the response of maybe this isn't for me or maybe I'm just you know not cut out for it or just something along the lines of no, this doesn't work. They're responding with no, everybody else but me is wrong. My uh, this character is wrong. This game is wrong. The options that this game has is wrong. There's a almost stubborn sense of pride in what, in whether there's something wrong with you or whether there's a game. I mean, like for me, example, I am not going to go into RTSs and say, "Well, this game's a piece of shit because it doesn't have the part that I like. It doesn't have the base building component." I go to something like Company of Heroes, and I'm gonna say, "You know what? Th this isn't this isn't for me. Maybe I'll just uh, maybe I'll just go play a little." Uh, Halo Wars again, or maybe I'll go play a little StarCraft 2 and, you know, because that's got the parts that I like. We'll see that happen for gamers in general. They're going to... Uh, look, look at the difference in audiences for something like Battlefield compared to Call of Duty. That's a further reinforcement that there needs to be this open market for other ideas. It, it's great that we're seeing people respond with something like you know, things in this game aren't for me because they're going out and creating something else. But rather than creating something else or coming up with a new idea, we're seeing people go to the creators and say, no, you have to change that because I think it's wrong. Hmm. That's, yeah. And has is, is there ever been a historical comparison with books where they're like, we needed uh, multiple copies of this book, one with a woman, one, you know, like you just wrote a new book, you wrote a different book, like you didn't just, 
be like, oh, this, this, I'm sure there are people who have been like, this story would have been better with a woman or, you know, a man or whatever, but not to this extent, not uh, like, oh, just make. The term is women with two Ys. Thank you very oh. much. I, I always see that as wyvern, so <laughs> wyvern. Wyvern. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even look at that. Like, and it's funny because I I saw someone say stop saying female, use the word woman, and like that literally comes from the word like wife man. So it's just funny when people bicker about words like that because it's just like I can find a word, I can find a worse one. You know, it's just. Women, it's oh ridiculous. my god, yeah, it just never stops, right? Yeah, it's just be like, oh, well, I can say fag because it means cigarette or whatever. Yeah, like, no, bundle no, of sticks. You can say over time, unfortunately. Or you say fag because you mean loud, annoying, and obnoxious person who's inconsiderate of those around them, right? Yeah, you know, there is that definition. Well, and geographically, words change too, right? Like there are certain words in in Britain and Scotland that mean a whole lot worse than they do here, and they mean something different, and vice versa, so... Well, and we're going to have people in other countries who might freak out at the almost uh, casual way some of us say douchebag, or, uh, yeah. you know, or, or something like uh, asshole, but then we're going to go down to, uh, you know, we, we have uh, we have good old Straya using, uh, using the word uh, cunt like it's going out of style there, you know what I mean? Like, that yeah. that is their go-to word for well, when they're the saying French, someone's being a dick. When you when you say zut in French, it's not that big of a deal. But, like, supposedly, I can't remember, but, like, if you translated it into English, and I mean, we were taught this in school as kids, that that is a, as a French word. It just kind of means, like, crap. But, I mean, in some places, if, if you contextualize it, it's the same as saying fuck, so... It's just, it's geographically offensive to some people. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, they're still just words, though, right? Right. Or are they something more? I mean, they are. Well, no, no, no. But, the, like, the, the words, of course, they have context, but, like, it depends on where you say it. You're not going to say these swear words in, uh, in church, are you? There's, there's an individual context to it, and the problem is, yeah. is that we'll see people who have that individual or that personal problem with those words projecting onto others saying you have to have the same respect or the same offendedness as I do with this because that's the way I want things to work. Yeah. I mean, we can't be... It just even with the grand public, especially on the internet, there's no, there's no, no nice or be nice police, you know? Just people are going to get offended over everything. And yeah. Part of the part of the internet, at least when I grew up on the internet, it was people were mean. I mean, this mm -hmm. is the internet. Well, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's uh, that's all to comment on from that point. I think we need to get back to what constitutes. A okay, game. yeah. So, what do you think? Um, your what actually makes it a game? Then is it just gameplay? Can games be more gamey than others based upon? Some sort of factor. Well, I think uh, I, I think based on uh, my review, which is over at uh, GoodGamers.us, if you want to check it out, my review for Hadful Boyfriend, I made the comment that I do think that the mere recognition of a potential loss or a potential failure is probably one of the key things that factors into whether or not there's some sort of a game. You know, you can't. It's going back to the problem-solving thing. There's no problem-solving, for the most part, at least uh, in terms of movies or music or that kind of thing. There's going to be commentary on something that might be problem-solving or there might be... Uh, how, how do I put it? There might be something that challenges a person in terms of their thinking, but there's not direct possibility of failure that will impede the... Uh, uh, the audience member or the consumer from getting that full experience. And I think that was one of the things that I think it was Roger Ebert made the argument for why games can't be classified as art because that that sort of wall that keeps a person from being able to uh, experience everything that quote unquote piece of art has to offer, it means that it can't be qualified as art. It's sort of a paradox I guess, almost. 
Okay. So what? It, so you think that the one of the basic, um, if not primary, reasons why something can constitute as a game is a failure state? Am I hearing this correctly? Yeah, that that sounds about right. So if a game doesn't have a failure state, it's less of a game, according to your definition. I would say yes, it is less of a game than other games. That doesn't mean it is a worse game or a bad game in relation. I think it's not far to suggest, though, that it means that it's less of a game. So what about Myst? Was there a failure state in Myst or no? I actually don't remember if there were failure no, states. There, there was in one of them, I think, but um, I think it's more along the lines of there being, for lack of a better word, rules, and nothing happens if you don't obey the rules of the game, so to speak. Like, in Miss, you had to solve each puzzle to advance the story. You couldn't necessarily die, and you can't really die in a lot of the newer adventure games. I mean, there are there are some that you can, but you can't really die. The only way to, to, to lose is to give up. So I think it's more you have to accomplish something to progress the story is a better way to, to kind of get that across. So... You have your set rules, and the rule of mist is you solve the puzzle to advance. You know, whether or not you choose to solve it is up to you, but that's that's essentially yeah. not playing the game. If not playing the game is the only way to to change it by not obeying the rules, then you've kind of lost, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to bring down the axe on either of you two. I mean no, no. it's a complicated no. so it makes for interesting. It's something that needs to be discussed. What do you think about Mads? Something Mads, we question about this. Right. Uh, well. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so somebody actually, uh, if if I can stop uh, adjusting my voice, somebody actually asked what a failure state constitutes. Right. What's a what's a failure state? Um, and that you know mm. that's that's probably a, a, a good question. Uh, uh, all things considered, does anybody want to answer? No, I mean, are you gonna tell? Well, us we can look at the chat. Uh, somebody said <laughs> uh, that, that's more of a comedic answer than I was expecting. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, yeah, let's 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 uh, let's try for something new. Um, go ahead. Yeah, there are various various. Uh, you know, you, you can if, any think... game can can have various states, right? Yes. That's if if you look at a, a chessboard, you know the the state of the game would be where the pieces are. That's that's basically how it is. So in chess, the failure state of one of the sides would be that one of the like the king is uh, is checked and he's mate. That is uh, that is that is the fail state of chess. Um, most games generally have a, a position where they can put one player in a fail state, um, and that's that's really that's really crucial to the idea of winning. Because if you can't lose, can you win? Um, Something like mist, uh, you could definitely say you could win mist because you you could complete it, but that also implies that you could somehow lose mist. And and to a degree, like if you ask somebody like Total Biscuit, who has been been speaking a lot about fail states because that's apparently really important to him, uh, you know, he, he his point would be that there's an implied fail state in that you can get stuck and never complete a game. And that's a that's a little bit of a bleak thing to right. say about a game such as Mist, but yeah, I think it kind of goes. Okay, I have my own personal definition myself. I don't claim that it live up to scrutiny, but I feel that to constitute as a game, there needs to be a degree of proficiency with which the player can have. I think any game where you can be better at it or you know understand the puzzles better, I feel that is right. something I feel should describe what a game is. If there's, you know, gameplay and you become better or worse at it, and in turn even fail at it or win the game, that for me is my safe bet. But what were you going to say, Jennifer? Well, that's just it, right? It, it's the, it is the rules again, which is like if you become better with the rules, you become better at the game. So it's, it is the same thing, basically. Well, I, um, uh, I, we have a where there are more people we want to get this input from, and so uh, I think it's about time we heard uh, from this other person uh, what they think constitutes that failure state. So uh, why don't you uh, 
uh, go ahead there, new person, if we can actually get you up and running off that. And I don't think she's joined yet. She'll chime in when she uh, gets here. We have somebody else coming in very shortly. So, yeah, we will have them chime in when they arrive. Okay, well, what do you guys think about my definition? Jennifer thinks I'm just stealing from her idea, right? I mean, is that what I'm getting here? I think no, that's what I just I'm think kidding, it's a I'm different kidding. interpretation. No, no. Um, but, I mean, that's that's what it, I feel it is. I mean, a lot of people like to say that there's gameplay, but, you know, what is gameplay? Because people could say Gone Home has gameplay or Depression Quest has gameplay. But is there a proficiency or is there a degree of being able to be better at that game? Well, uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on my uh, on my ancient ancient uh, teachings of game theory. Um, okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a French dude, a fellow called uh, Roger. Uh, God, I I'm not sure I pronounced this right. <laughs> the French. Roger, yeah, Ro- Ro- Roger Calois. Uh, who is uh, a French sociologist, apparently, according to this Wikipedia page I'm on. Right. So, so he wrote a, a remarkable, um, a remarkable, uh, a very early paper, uh, I think, from the 60s, on uh, what constitutes games and trying to classify the various kinds of joys you could you could feel during a game. And what do you what do you describe there? Um, I, I, if, if I'm reading you right, it would be mastery. The idea of enjoying mastery is crucial to a game. Is that right? No, not so much the enjoyment of mastery as whether you know there is mastery. Ideally, you'd want to enjoy it, but I think games like Papers, Please has kind of put forth the notion of whether games should be enjoyable or if they can. <laughs> right. So, so the... Um, Okay, so so the notion of mastery is, is 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 crucial to games. Yeah, I I can see that. Um, I'm not. I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessarily important in in every sense. I mean, this 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 French fellows that I mentioned, um, he he kind of boils um, boils aspects of that game down into into various categories, and he doesn't so much focus on mastery as much as he focuses on competition. Uh, you could you could take or oh, oh, and chance, right? There are games that are completely like random games of chance. Like you you could have a a slot machine or a, a pair of dice, and the the winner would be random. Would you say that's not a game? I mean, maybe it has less gameness to it, but it's it it definitely has less mastery if it's just a coin toss, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. If it's pure randomness, there's there's no degree of it. Um, there are certain games that do rely more on that, but continue with your point. But I agree with you so far. Right. Okay. So, 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 so this is this is the the, the thing you run into with uh, classifying games. You you run into an issue of uh, of of understanding what is crucial, right? You you want to you want to say if it doesn't have this crucial aspect, it's not, and if it has this crucial aspect, it is. I don't think I- we. Sorry, I, I do think one crucial aspect I would say, because people are mentioning books and movies, I do think there's an there is a level of engagement required for it to be a game as mechanically, you know, like a book, like yeah, you can stop and play a movie, but I don't think that it requires a level of engagement that would warrant me calling it a game, I guess. Right. So so at least you <laughs> So, so a game would would discover and not not function the same way if you fell asleep in front of it. Is that right? Is that, yeah, that's a pretty low bar. I feel, <laughs> you know, yeah. you you have you have to at least participate actively. I, 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 okay, so that's that's probably something you can say is common across all games, but you you very quickly run into something where, as uh, as uh, Shill says. You know, there's there's something that is, that is that is core about gaming, from the way he sees it, that is that he sees across the games he thinks of as games. Is that is that right? Chill. Pardon, say that a bit again. Uh, I, I said that that very quickly. You run into you run into with these definitions of what's a game. You run into this 
this notion of, of various people, for instance, you having an idea about something that is common across all games to, to more like to, to a bigger or smaller degree. Is that right? Yeah, I would yeah. Uh, you know, all games share what would make a game, right? Yeah, that's that's what you'd say, right? And and Jen said yeah. that, you know, a, a game would recognize if you fell asleep in front of it. Right. That that's right. something Yeah. Yeah. So but but you would say, well there's more than that, right? Well, I, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. But I just mean on a mechanical level, I don't... Like, you could probably... And this is where you get into some tricky language where it's, yes, I can make a game out of anything. I could make a game out of a group of pencils. But that doesn't make pencils themselves a game. And the same with movies. Just because I can stop, rewind, play doesn't mean that, you know, necessarily it's the same thing as a game. Unless it's created with rules and intended to be played like a game. Like, there are murder mystery movies that you kind of do that with. But... I don't think just your straight up movie is a game, even if you change the intention. Because I had this discussion with somebody before where they're like, well, a movie is a game because I made it a game. And it's like, well, a piece of hair is a game if you make it a game, but that doesn't make the thing a game by itself. Well, why don't you continue with the point you're trying to bring in, Mads? Um, the, the point I'm bringing in is just that when you when you start classifying various things as games you you inevitably even even this old french dude had trouble like and and if you look at any of the any of the people even even any of the people in Dicra, they probably have all of their own little definitions of what makes a game i uh, i i'm not familiar with with all of them uh but i know like at least some of them have specific ideas about what gameness is and what's what's particularly gamey, uh, right? So I don't know. Try, try. I I honestly feel like trying to nail it down too hard is 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 gonna be fruitless. I don't I don't think it can really be done. Yeah, I I wouldn't disagree with that, but still makes it fun to talk about, right? And there's still this a significant rise of belief that certain games aren't worthy of the title, right? Games I'm not really... I'm not, depression sticky on the I'm not sticky on the title. I'm okay with calling them games or game Ellis. I just think that it, it's a little... It's, it's not right to get mad that people don't consider them as much of a game as something else. Like... You know, I've played every kind of game on the planet. I've enjoyed everything from, you know, Zork to, to Army of Two and stuff like that. But at the same time, I...